Hello and welcome to this introductory uh, session about what is it like to study chemistry at Hills Road. My name is uh, Mr Chapman and I have a colleague with me um, who's my head of department, uh, Miss Caldecott, and I have three students who um, kindly enough volunteered to come and volunteer their time to tell you about what it's, the students' experience is like. So we've got Isabella, uh, Jemima and Omar, who we're going to hear about on a little bit later. So the, the chemistry department has uh, five dedicated labs. As you can see, I'm in one now. You'll see another when you um, see Ms. Caldecott, um, who's going to answer the Q&A afterwards. Um, so we have yeah, the five dedicated labs. They've all got fume hoods, and they're very well uh, catered for um, doing A-level practical. We've also got access to what's referred to as a science lecture theatre which is a very large uh, space where we can get external speakers to come in and speak to a large amount of the cohort at once, which is really nice. We do that at least once a year, but um, as many times as we can organize. And uh, we do OCRA as our main um, chemistry course, so which is the most popular one. I am biased, but I um, do massively prefer OCRA uh, in class to the other exam boards. So um, why do you, would you want to choose chemistry? Well, um, basically chemistry comes uh, out, out of all the A-levels, it's the problem solving um, subject. So if you like logical problem solving, it's gonna be the subject for you. Um, it does actually take quite a lot of imagination and creativity because the questions that get asked are incredibly difficult and often sort of out of the box thinking does really help. So one thing that always surprises parents and students I speak to is the fact that actually you do need to have that sort of creativity and problem solving together in order to answer some questions. Um, over the course of the two years with us, you do about 50 uh, practicals, which is a lot more than um, tends to be done at uh, GCSE. So we pack in a lot of practical skills. I have to say, um, when I taught elsewhere at other centers, um, that there were some classic practicals that I always loved. And we do all those classic practicals and we do so many more that I couldn't even imagine before, but there are, you do a lot of practicals and they are a great, a lot of fun. We, it's really important that if you want to take chemistry, like there's a reason behind it that you've got a sort of a career plan, or maybe you just really love the subject. Either are perfectly uh, fine. So if you're in the sort of band who you've got a career where you're thinking about um, which needs chemistry, whether that's a straight chemistry, pure chemistry degree, or if you're thinking about vocation, uh, we get lots and lots of doctors, we get lots and lots of um, nurses, veterinary scientists, and the occasional dentist. I have found um, usually I've, uh, I see fewer dentists than uh, than the others, and we'll be fun students as well. The main reason you'd want to choose chemistry though is because you enjoy it. I personally think that the A-level chemistry syllabus is way more interesting than the GCSE one. So if you are coming from GCSE thinking, I really like this subject, then you're going to love the A-level um, syllabus because um, it just goes into a lot more depth. You get to answer, get to know why things happen because in a lot of the sort of GCSE uh, specifications, you end up sort of learning things a little bit by rote. Like, I know this happens. Whereas at A level, it's much more about the reasons why and applying that to other scenarios. Can you predict exactly what will happen in this weird scenario based on what you already know? And so that's um, really nice. And I really like, like the A level chemistry. I am biased, obviously. I, I think it's very nice. Now, so we've asked some students to give us some quotes in terms of what they um, think. Um, obviously, they were kind enough to say that um, we all seem incredibly inapproachable, which is what you'd hope that, uh, what we hope that how we come across. Um, the resources looked amazing. I know Isabella is planning on, um, how we were talking before uh, about sort of what things like could be said. And she said one of the things that really, um, she likes was our study packs so we'll talk about this in a little bit more detail but um we basically have um all the notes and everything organized 
for any particular topic. So this is 5A, everything you need to know about rates, all in this pack um, here. And most importantly, they love chemistry. So it's really important that you enjoy the subject. So why choose chemistry? I chose chemistry because I thought it would fit nicely with my other subjects, biology and maths. And this is and that to be completely true, but it fit, uh, fits nicely with um, lots of subjects. And even when it doesn't fit nicely because of the problem solving nature of it, some people just really enjoy it. I remember one of my um, most sort of passionate chemists, actually the other two subjects you'd think made, made no sense. They were doing politics, they were doing art and they were doing chemistry. And they just absolutely adored all of those subjects and they found something in the end to go to university which suited them. So sometimes just because you really like subjects is a good reason to um, go and do them. So what do we study? So the nice thing about the A-level specification is the fact that it does go over and reinforces a lot of the sort of GCSE work. So you'll find that there's different colors here. You've got um, the foundational chemistry, where we've got atomic structure, mole, et cetera. That's all things that you do at GCSE. And we spend basically the first term up until Christmas, roughly um, sort of reinforcing GCSE things and taking them up into the level that we need uh, just to build those, uh, those fundamentals in. And then we can start um, teaching the organic and the physical side of the course. So there's lots and lots of interesting uh, topics there. The one thing that I would probably say is that this foundational stuff is probably the, the things you most recognize from uh, GCSE, um, that actually a lot of the physical um, ends up being a little bit more maths uh, based. And there's a few topics there that you've touched on, but the organic side is the side that um, people generally haven't done too much of. I remember when I used to teach GCSE, I'd probably say, I'd probably only spend six to 12 lessons on organic, whereas organic is gonna be one half of the course, which is um, very nice. The other thing I probably, sorry, one thing I should mention about uh, what will you study is what the exam will look like in the end is the fact that when you answer chemistry questions uh, at the end, when you do your final exam paper, it isn't um, extended prose. If you are answering an organic question, you'll be answering that generally with a diagram or drawings or equations and things like that. If it's physical, it will often be a calculation. So that's the sort of answers that you're going to be uh, doing. It won't be too much in terms of extended prose. Like that. What skills will you develop? As I said previously, you're going to do 50 practicals. Uh, and I want to say here, health and safety and general uh, lab skills are taken incredibly seriously. Um, and that's ingrained in the students um, is part of the culture here. And it just means that everyone like really learns uh, to um, really develops their skills. So uh, we see that in the fact that we take a, um, a gap year student often, uh, we actually employ as part of our technicians and actually, it is amazing how quickly they already have the skills required for that post because of all of the, the training and development they get over the course of two years. Generally, practicals will be done in pairs most of the time. So you'll have an element of teamwork and generally we'll frame things. So to try and avoid the sort of classic issue that comes up with any school practical, which is photos mm -hmm. recipe following. So there will be some more thoughts and problem solving part of it where you might not be told precisely what equipment that you should use. You need to go collect it yourself, et cetera. That way it sort of develops those skills rather than being able to simply look at a recipe and follow it. Are you, how are you thinking about the science behind it? Um, so what skills do you need? So we have uh, entry requirements uh, as any subject at Hills Road uh, has. So we ask that you have a seven in GCSE chemistry. So that's if you're doing triple science or double sevens if you are doing the uh, double science. I would like to comment now that actually um, statistically that it's not been shown that people who have ac had access to the triple science compared to the double science, there is no difference in terms of the interest they get. So 
having the seven in uh, the GCSE chemistry rather than the double science, that makes no odds in terms of what your end results should be. So you shouldn't feel like because I've done double science, maybe I can't do this. There's no evidence to say that's the, the case. You also need to have a seven in maths. Uh, I would say in year 12, the maths content is there, but um, generally it's not too difficult, but the maths content definitely increases when you get to your 13 year. There's no, you definitely don't need to have done um, A-level maths in order to access anything. It's obviously a help, but it's not uh, something that is required. But you need a seven at GCSE maths just to have that good grounding in order to understand precisely uh, what is happening. You realistically, you need a good understanding of your GCSE um, sciences, um, but we ensure that by setting summer work before you come. So uh, I think I have heard the students moan that chemistry set possibly the most summer work, uh, but that's just to ensure that you're coming in with the uh, with that good understanding. You sort of, uh, and that way, any sort of holes in sort of your understanding, I think, can get sorted out early on. If you can fix issues early on, you can prevent them from snowballing. So it's really important that we do that sort of check-in process. It's important you have confidence in writing ionic equations and things like that and working in the lab. But again, we can build that as we go across uh, the, the time. It's also important that you have good sort of pattern recognition and problem solving skills, because as I said, um, the chemistry does have a reputation for being a really difficult subject. And the reason for that is that the exam questions at the end are very difficult. And so the sort of problem solving nature of it means that it's not going to be a question that you've seen before, but you have all the skills, we develop all of those skills in order to allow you to access those questions. In actual fact, there's a little bit of a, a joke that happens in, um, in between the chemistry teachers, which is simply the fact that if the students leave the exam um, hall and they say that paper is easy, we generally think that's a bad thing because we spend so much of the two years developing their skills to recognize and handle those really difficult questions. But actually, statistically, if the paper is really hard, our students do incredibly well, because that is part of the, one of the key things that we try and sort of develop and try and instill in their time here. Now, it is important that you um, have some resilience and perseverance and a willingness to work hard. But the nice thing is we will be there to support you all the way throughout your two years. And we're going to talk about in a moment about the different ways that we support you. As I've mentioned, that chemistry does have a reputation for being hard, but realistically, every A-level is hard in their own way. And so this idea of resilience and perse perseverance and a willingness to work hard is going to be across the board. So how will you be supported? So. Um, the, the thing that I think is amazing here is these study packs. So this is what we refer to as a study pack. Normally, if it was an open evening, these would be uh, uh, lined up on the desks and you could have a look through. But the concept is that basically um, writing down notes verbatim isn't particularly helpful. Um, so instead, what we have is we have this pack, uh, this pack of uh, here that covers the entire topic but in the form of questions. So the questions asked about everything. So this becomes your notes, um, but all your notes are in the form of questions. And that's really good because then you've sort of consolidated the information that you've learned from the teacher and um, sort of been made to think about it. And thinking is the key. One of the key problems we have when students coming from GCSE to A-level is that tends to be that the way that people revise, the way people think about learning doesn't, isn't really too accurate. So it's really important that you're thinking, that you're trying to apply your knowledge to different scenarios in order to do as well as you can. We've also got an intranet site. Uh, our intranet site is so full and in actual fact um, that after this year it's going to even be even more full because we're going to have various videos of various lessons we've done which is only going to add to the um, amount of support we can offer. 
there's a ton of support materials, a ton of revision materials, a ton of extension materials. In the joke I always make is the fact that uh, there's too much on the internet site for one student to do, which is true. But we can signpost you to the different uh, things that will be helpful and they all have a use. And so it's really helpful that when a student comes and says, I need more questions on this, I need more help on that, we can guide you to it. And th one thing that we um, really pride our, our, ourselves on here is the fact that we make sure that any sheet that we give, like there's full worked answers, so a student in their own time can look at those answers and they make sense. Because the problem is that um, mark schemes in general aren't designed for students to read, so we kind of come up with our own where they're, they're, um, they're more guided than, and they make more sense. We also have uh, support through um, surgeries, um, which is a basically every single lunchtime, one of the chemistry teachers will a, a team of eight um, will sit, sit in the room and we're ready to answer questions. Students come, they answer questions, and they go. It's a really useful system and just means that any questions you will uh, have, you can always ask. We have a peer mentoring scheme where um, year 13 students mentor year 12 students. And there's also a chemistry society, but I won't touch on that too much because um, Isabella is actually the chair of that uh, society. We also have lots of extension activities. We do um, the Royal Society of uh, Chemistry's school uh, analytic pool competition. Uh, in actual fact, uh, the only problem with that competition is the fact that we're only allowed to, spend, to send one team but what we do instead is we have an internal competition that is almost as large as, uh, well, probably not, uh, not quite as large, but it's still pretty large. Um, our own internal competition in order to determine the one team that goes. So anyone who wants to will gain an experience and will be able to say, oh, I've had a go at doing all these various extra techniques that are available in doing that sort of competition. And we also uh, have hundreds of students go in for like, Chemistry Olympiad and c 3 l 6 combined. These are um, extracurricular um, tests that you can do. And we have programs of study to sort of get you ready for those exams. And as we've insinuated, the practical work is very important, doing 50 practicals each year. Oh, sorry, over the two years. So key thing is this sort of idea of support, the drop-in sessions. I really enjoy doing them. Um, this student says for the daily uh, lunchtime drop-in se help sessions, I've used them more times than I can remember to the opportunity for year 13 mentoring, when, uh, which is always there when I need it. Um, another student said, I know that many uh, students may worry about the step up in difficulty from GCSE, but the sport available, I have found that no student is left behind if they don't understand anything. There's always an opportunity to come ask um, a teacher or and Generally, we're very free and open with our time. Um, I'm very happy to sit down and go through anything with any of my students. So our performance here is uh, very good. I'm always amazed when we do our um, sort of analytics at the end of the year. Um, they perform so well. And as teachers, we can only take part of the credit, but I think there is a culture here that the students work hard, they see other students working hard, there's the support network, and it just allows them to flourish because our A, a star to B uh, percentage is 73%, which has been um, very good. And we we very rarely have anyone, uh, yes, uh, any AU uh, basically. It's a very rare uh, instance, I say. But I'm always impressed by what the students uh, manage to do uh, at the end. Uh, student destination. So we have, like, I'll admit that most of the students will go off and do higher education, but we do this thing called um, progress review, where we just one to one sit down with students, go, "Hey, how's everything going? Is there anything more we can do to help? What are your future plans?" And in that, I would say there has been a shift, a market shift towards people wanting to do apprenticeships rather than university degrees. And so there's much more of that. But you'll see that of the high employment, generally students will be going into a chemistry related sort of uh, course like biochemistry, medicine, et cetera. So we have a vast, vast, um, most of our students will go, go see that. 
I'm always surprised by the number of uh, medical students we um, successfully get through every year. Um, it's always amazing. But they're very dedicated uh, medical students. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass you on to our students. So I'm going to pass you on to um, Isabella. While Isabella is sorting out her issues, Jemima, would you be able to um, answer the question yourself? So why, um, sorry, well, remind myself again. So why did you choose chemistry at Hills Road? Yep. Um, hi, I'm Jemima. Um, I did. I do chemistry, biology, and maths here. And I chose to do chemistry because it was um, related to my other subjects um, and it related to what I want to do in uni. Um, I was also really interested in um, chemistry in GCSE, although we didn't touch on it very much. And it has been really interesting to learn um, chemistry A level um, in a lot more detail. And at Hills, um, it's really helpful here. Um, uh, we have a lot of help if you ask for it. Um, it, it really does help. And um, we have a lot of um, opportunities um, to ask teachers for help and other students who are doing chemistry. So yeah, it's, uh, I do recommend it. Excellent, thank you. Um, do you want to turn off your, yeah. uh, and we will go to Omar and then we'll see if Isab uh, Isabella is okay for, to go third. Hello everyone, I'm Omar and I took chemistry because um, at GCSE it was uh, by far my favourite subject um, and as I moved into A-level it is still my favourite subject. Uh, I take biology, chemistry and maths as well um, and out of those it's, it's the one I enjoy the most uh, but I must say out of those in my opinion is the hardest one. Um, I would say that there is a big jump between GCSE chemistry and A-level chemistry. Um, broadly, you, you, you do cover the same sort of topics, but you, you cover them in, in much greater detail. Um, so there is a lot more content to learn. Um, and for me, it was uh, 10 times the work, 10 times the effort, um, 10 times the learning, really. Um, and I would say you get out what you put in. Um, so yeah, um, in my opinion, the lessons are really interactive. Um, the teachers are uh, do an amazing job in supporting your learning, um, uh, and, and and there's also lots of opportunities available uh, in the department from uh, the biology Olympiad, which you can do at the end of year twelve, um, and there's also said uh, lunchtime surgery, which you can go to and you can ask. Um, the teacher that's in that surgery, um, any question you have. Thank you, Omar. Um, Isabella, do you think your uh, mic's work working now? Yes, yeah, I think it's all working now, sorry. Um, hi, I'm Isabella and I take chemistry and biology and maths. I assure you, not everyone does take that three. Um, I just want to talk about, I remember coming to an open evening when I was in year 11. And I had planned to set my sixth form um, at my local school. It was only 15 minutes away. And I, I just thought I'd come to Hills Road, you know, why not have a look? Um, and I met this very, very enthusiastic year 13. And she was showing me all about study packs. She was saying how nice the teachers were. And I just, I just thought it sounded too good to be true. But that convinced me to spend nearly three hours a day commuting and come to Hills Road. And I, I had very high expectations. Um, and they actually, Hills Road exceeded my expectations. The study packs, the surgeries, I think um, the way you can talk to staff that you can't quite at a secondary school and the support they provide is just, you know, far beyond what I expected. Um, I'm really, really enjoying it. And I think um, Chemistry Societies, which I'm the chair of, is also one thing that I thought was wonderful. Um, as a very nervous year 11, I could never imagine that I'd be elected a chair of the society. But I think year tw through year 12, it was such a help. You know, you could go along one or two lunch times a week um, when they ran sessions. You could you know, sit there with your friends, with year 13s who were just very friendly, very approachable, and go over whatever you've been doing in class. Um, chemistry Society makes resources that you, you know, handmade and um, that you can't find anywhere else online. And you kind of work through specific to your study pack or the tests that's coming up. 
and it, it's just wonderful. Um, this year we're running sessions online for pupils. We've also been organising mentoring. So I think it's about 60, 60 year 12s now who have year 13s who they meet once a week or once a fortnight and um, get any help they need with chemistry. And I think, um, yeah, it's just really fun. I've, I've loved chemistry so much. I've actually applied to do a degree in it now. Um, and I've got some offers which I'm very happy about. And so I'd say if you're considering taking chemistry, I think it's a really, really good option. And if you want to do well in it, then you should definitely come to Hills Road. Right, um, thank you. Um, so I'm going to pass you on to um, Ms. Caldecott, who is my head of department, uh, to answer any of the questions that you've, uh, have been, uh, that you've had. Um, don't worry if um, not all the questions get answered in the Q&A bit. There will be um, some back and forth that will happen after that. So. I'll pass over to you, um, Ms. Caldecott. Chemistry course um, and also sharing your experiences. I'm sure the people um, in the presentation uh, learned a lot from what you had to share with them. So I've been reading your questions busily as Mr. Chapman's been talking. Um, thank you so much. You've asked some brilliant things. If I haven't answered you yet, it's just because I know it's an important question. I want to make sure I read it out. So I will slowly go through these. I might ask some students to kind of give their input as well. So the first question was what percentage of applicants get accepted into the course? So there are a few um, different uh, sort of approaches to applying to Hills Road and a few different hurdles to get through in terms of becoming a student. The first one is a kind of general application. This is based on your predicted grades that quite often come from mock exams for GCSEs. And it might be that at that point, you don't have the grades for chemistry. That's OK. If you do or you don't apply, um, come speak to us. You'll have an informal guidance meeting. If you apply to the college, we'll give you some advice. Um, and if you meet the general entry requirements and the entry requirements for your subjects, there's a very high chance that you would receive an offer. The next hurdle to get through is then getting your GCSE results. Um, so once you have your GCSE results, um, you may have already held a place in chemistry. And if you get the GCSE results you need, which is a seven in chemistry and a seven in maths, then you'll be accepted into the course. We also accept a seven, seven in double science instead of chemistry. And there really is no difference between the seven in chemistry and the seven, seven in double science, if anyone is concerned about that. We used to view them as completely equivalent. Um, if you don't quite... Um, Let's say you didn't quite meet the entry requirements when you originally applied and so you couldn't apply for chemistry based on your mock exam results and you did meet the entry requirements once you've got your GCSE results, you would have the opportunity to change course. And this year, everybody who asked to change course to come into chemistry had their wish granted, provided they had the entry requirements. We also had a little bit of flexibility for some students that had some strange GCSE profiles because of the um, CAG process. The students that had done, for example, very well in maths, but not quite as well in their chemistry, we gave them the benefit of the doubt this year and are supporting them to continue in their course. So there you go. Hopefully that answered that question. Um, I have a question from Tom who said, I heard that chemistry is the most difficult A-level. Is that so? Um, I suppose it depends on who you are. I would certainly think that chemistry is challenging because of the variety of skills that it brings into play. Um, so you do need to be a good mathematician. You do need to be able to hold on to a lot of information in your mind. You do need to be a good problem solver. And chemistry is an applied subject. So knowing lots of facts isn't enough. You really have to be able to be creative with those facts in order to apply them. That said, if that's the type of thing you enjoy, if you like puzzles and sudikus and challenges and looking at things in abstract ways, perhaps you wouldn't find chemistry difficult, perhaps you would just find it enjoyable. So yes, there is a lot of challenge um, and that's also completely forgetting all the physical skills that go with practical work. Um, there is also a lot of work and I know that's what Omar touched on. Um, earlier when he said that it was his most challenging subject but he's completely right that you get out what you put in um, and if you're willing to put the work in particularly early on to make sure that you've got those basics really sorted you can really fly with chemistry and enjoy it um, so we are, I was asked about typical class sizes the maximum is 24 most of our lower sixth classes this year are between 20 and 22. Um, I was asked, do you need to take another science or maths at A-level to take chemistry? And you don't have to, um, you know, there's no rule about what you have to choose to study chemistry at A-level. You could quite happily have chemistry, geography and history if you wanted, um, or an even more creative combination. I've certainly had students who've studied chemistry, French and dance in the past and really enjoyed their chemistry. The problem is that if you really enjoy your chemistry and decide that you want to go on and do something related to chemistry in the future, you would likely need another science or another STEM subject. So maybe chemistry and maths or chemistry and physics or chemistry and biology. 
So if you know you're taking chemistry along with two other subjects that are not STEM and are totally unrelated, just because you enjoy it and you know that you have no intention of going on and doing anything science related in the future, do it. You know, we've got plenty of students that are just in chemistry for the love of chemistry. Um, but if you know that you might want to do something related to chemistry in the future, another STEM subject is what you need to support it. It would be unlikely that you could progress with chemistry without another STEM subject. So I had a question about COVID affecting the amount of support and face-to-face -face teaching you can offer. And this is, is this likely to be the case next year? I very much hope not. Um, obviously we would love to be in a full timetable where we're seeing everybody face-to-face. -face. We're still offering 100% of our timetable. It's in a slightly different way. Um, so uh, you may already be aware that we have students coming into college for one week and then being taught at home for one week by lectures. Um, so with our lower sixth, I see my lower sixth classes for four hours in one week, two lots of two hours at the moment and then see them for another four hours for lectures. This model is working really well, pretty well for us, actually. I think uh, it's been nice for us to kind of really have a think about how we deliver the course, um, focus on the skills that we can deliver well in lectures, really make the most of lessons. So obviously it's not what we um, planned for, and I would very much like to go back to it being 100% face-to-face. I think as soon as we know that it's safe to bring students on site, that's absolutely what we would do. There has been some interesting things that have come out of this. Having slightly longer lessons has allowed us to do some more creative and interesting practical work so we're very much looking at this as an opportunity to kind of rejuvenate what we do um, I suppose uh, to still give our students um, the best kind of education in terms of support nothing's changed in fact because we're offering lectures to larger groups teachers are more free they're actually more on hand to offer support we're running more catch-up classes more external workshops than we've ever been able to offer before making sure that we're supporting students individually and also in small groups where they need it um, so that's actually working very well for us the online model has shown us different ways to support students students that have been really effective. How many people start and finish the course? Um, very few people just leave to nothing. Um, I think last year one student left us um, and left the college um, because they wanted to go and study elsewhere. Um, there are students who stop studying chemistry because they start a four subject program and then decide that they don't need chemistry for whatever they want to go on to. There's also the opportunity to kind of jump ship, I suppose, um, in the first few weeks if you realise you've signed up and it's not what you want. So I've had a handful of students leave chemistry to go to other subjects and a handful of students come and join chemistry because they've realised that's what they want to do. But it's extremely unusual for a student to leave chemistry just because they're leaving. It's often because they're either making space for their other A-levels because they don't need chemistry for progression. Um, really, that's the only reason. Um, is there a big jump from GCSE to A-level? So Omar mentioned a jump. Isabella, are you still on the line? If you bring yourself back on, I might ask you this question in a second, because um, there's a couple that uh, would be good to ask students. So if um, you could bring yourself back on to video, I'll ask you a couple of questions. Whilst um, you do that, um, I had some questions about various different careers. So I had astrophysics and aerospace engineering, as well as engineering. Chemistry, astrophysics, definitely a good idea. Geology might also be useful. In terms of engineering, the problem solving side of chemistry might be helpful, but really it's physics and maths that you're looking at. Um, so uh, if chemistry is your, your third subject that you're still interested in, you think you could be dedicated to it, you think that you could work hard and enjoy it, definitely, you know, it's really there to help you um, for a third A level in terms of getting the grades that you need in order to progress. In terms of the problem, sol problem solving skills, it would definitely be useful. But if you really enjoy something else, there's your opportunity um, to study that something else. So for engineering, physics and math is a must. For aerospace um, engineering, again, but for kind of astrophysics, I would look and make sure that your course doesn't recommend taking either geology or chemistry. Um, I know that chemistry is definitely needed for medicine and that one of the science is needed is math needed. Your one of the science could be math. A lot of students who go on to medicine do chemistry, biology, math. That would be the standard program. It's not an essential. Case is not an essential. I was asked if a similar amount of girls and boys take chemistry. Now, for the last few years, we've had exactly the same number of girls and boys. Um, just uh, This is very normal. Chemistry is typically about 50-50. Uh, and we've actually had very close to, if not bang on, 50-50 uh, for the last few years. How many experiments 
very many from small practicals to massive synthesis. We do about 50 practicals across the course. The requirement from the exam board is 12, so we go quite a long way above and beyond to make sure that our students are really well prepared for what they will meet um, in their future career or studies. Uh, stereotypically, chemistry assumes more difficult A level, which you see is this accurate representation. We've got lots of questions like this. So, Isabella, can you help us out? Is chemistry your most difficult subject? And also, what did you find the transition from GCSE to A level like? I think it's very hard to pick a most difficult A level. I think some of the content and you know, to do mechanisms, which is kind of how reactions happen at A level, is very tricky. But then in some ways, some of the concepts in biology and the amount of content there is really hard. Um, and the kind of, yeah, the techniques used in maths is hard. So well, chemistry is quite a hard A-level. You know, you shouldn't go into it thinking, oh, this would be easy. I did fine at GCSE. But it's um, it's a very rewarding A-level as well, which I think you don't get as much from other subjects. And I think all, all subjects at A-level are hard in their own way, which is why you only take three and why they are A-levels. Um, and the transition from GCSE to A-level, I, I didn't find it too bad, I must admit. I think given a lot of kind of summer work and um, basic summer um, study packs at the beginning, it, you know, it is a jump, definitely. But they kind of bring it into um, building on the knowledge you had at GCC. I think there was one question about how some things um, change from GCC to A-level as you learn more. And I think you start off by building on that knowledge, which really helps you, you know, settle into the A-level course before you start learning a lot of new things. So it's not too bad. There's an interesting question um, in the chat that follows on from that, Isabella. Thank you. Um, about topics taught at GCSE that kind of change when they come to A-level. Remember that chemistry is talking about things that are infinitely tiny. We're talking about atoms and the way that they behave. So it's not something that you can necessarily experience with your own eyes, although we see the effects of it in the world around us. The way that we describe this to, to students um, is that the models that you use at GCSE are of a certain level of complexity that's appropriate for the types of things that you're trying to explain at GCSE. And those models become more sophisticated and complex as we try to explain things at A-level. And if you go on like Isabella to study chemistry at university, um, then the models will become even more complex and even more sophisticated. So don't worry about uh, A-level chemistry, you know, proving everything that you studied at GCSE wrong. That's not the case at all. It's just about polishing the models, making them more sophisticated for a kind of more um, adult challenging environment, I suppose. Uh, field trips, uh, because we've got 800 students, field trips is a bit of a challenge, but we do offer an awful lot of extension activities in-house, so kind of extension practical competitions, various and uh, lots of other things, as well as um, our forensics course. So we try to focus on doing extension practical in-house rather than on mass taking students out somewhere where they probably wouldn't actually be able to get their hands on any chemistry. Um, so this is not a physical opening. Uh, can we have a look at the packs virtues, a PDF or something? One of the first thing, one of the first packs you see is the summer work. Uh, so yeah, absolutely, we should try and get some of that out to you. But you will get to experience a pack in the summer work. The very first pack is the summer work. Um, so that's that one. Um, if you don't want to study science at university, would you still recommend taking chemistry as well as biology? You don't have to. And if you're not considering taking science at university, um, you're leaving yourself quite short in your program. If you are thinking of going to university just one subject that would then be what you were hoping to go on to. Um, so my advice would be look at the courses that you're interested in and use that um, to shape your decisions. If there's no requirements at all, you can pick whatever you like and you enjoy your sciences, why not? Um, so, uh, is there any crossover between chemistry and biology? They're not allowed to cross over, so A-levels aren't allowed to share content with other A-levels, but they do very closely knit into each other, where biology ends, chemistry begins, and you could absolutely say the same thing about chemistry and physics. They all do complement each other very well. How many exams are there at the end of the course? Three. There are two hour and 15 exams and one hour and a half. The two two hour and 15 exams have got different content and then the hour and a half brings it all together. And you're also assessed on your practical endorsement, which is a separate part of the qualification. How many chemistry classes do you have on average each year? So I think if you mean number of chemistry sets, there are 18 sets in each year group. So 18 sets of about 20 to 24 students is about 800 students in total once you've looked at both year groups. And if you mean how many lessons do you have on average, it's about four hours a week um, for all of the teaching weeks in the year. So I can't add that up off the top of my head, I'm afraid, <laughs> um, but a lot. Um, so that's that one. Seven in maths, is the mathematical content high? Yes, okay, chemistry is much more mathematical at A-level. Many of the things that you would have learned in a written theoretical way at GCC will become mathematical topics at 
available, things like rates of reaction, things like energy changes, things like pH, are all mathematical topics at A-level. Um, about 20 to 25% of the course is mathematical content, just for um, um, some kind of a proportion. If you're interested in geology, uh, which science would be the best? Chemistry is the natural fit with geology. Um, so we've got lots of students that do geology who do chemistry. I would recommend chemistry in that case. And most students who study A-level geology end up wanting to do geology. Um, so chemistry is a really good companion subject for that. Do we carry out, oh, I answered a question about carrying out experiments um, independently or under guidance. So at first you'll get lots of guidance, you even have pre-videos that you can watch um, to help you prepare for practicals to make sure that you've seen those practical skills being done correctly before you even come into the room. Um, but later on in the course, we do give you a little bit more freedom in terms of being a bit more and investigative with your practical work. So yes, don't worry, we look after you very well at the beginning, but you'll be super confident by the end. We want our students to be the students who go off to university labs and get people at our team. Um, is chemistry useful engineering in terms of the problem solving skills that you develop? Absolutely. But if you're desperate to study physics, uh, math and something else, not chemistry, um, then, you know, you can make space for that something else. But if you're not sure what that something else is, and you know chemistry, it's a really good um, place to practice um, those problem solving skills. Astrophysics, yes, again, have a look um, on the uh, UCAS website if you need further guidance about what subjects. But out of all of the different types of physics, astrophysics probably has the most to do with chemistry other than material science. Um, do we have a transition period for introducing this year? A-level, yes, there is a whole term of foundations chemistry. When some people talk about the jump between GCSE and chemistry, uh, or GCSE and A-level even in general, not just chemistry, they quite often are referring to the study skills that people need to develop, not the subject content. The subject content that you encounter will be quite similar. We also know that some people missed bits and pieces of their GCSE, so we will make sure to help plug those gaps. We're doing it with our current year 12. It's working really well. So we don't assume any knowledge um, coming in or that anyone's got a perfect grasp of GCSE. No, absolutely not. So hopefully the content flows relatively straightforwardly from GCSE to A-level. But the study skills and the independent work are very different. And we work really hard with our students to help them develop those. We don't expect students to come to us as perfect A-level students. You know, we help them to get to where they need to be to be successful. Today, I spent half a two hour lecture talking about revision skills and skills for managing chemistry work outside of lessons. So there's very active skills tuition that goes on as well as subject tuition to make sure that people get the most out of their A-level. Um, grade requirements, seven in chemistry and a seven in maths. And again, we will accept seven, seven in double science instead of chemistry. And there is no difference we find in how double science or triple science students do at all. Um, how do students find the current learning conditions? I think we'd all like a little bit more face-to-face, -face. it's what we're used to, um, but we've been so impressed with the student dedication and attendance. Um, my lectures have had almost perfect attendance, same with classes. I think also to first-year students that are coming to us, it's something new and different, and they're being treated a little bit more like adults, and I think this is a really nice way for them to be. I think usually by the end of year 11, students have got a little bit tired of being in the same place for five years. I think coming somewhere like a sixth college is a really nice stepping stone in terms of getting them ready for future life. Um, so I think they're enjoying the current learning conditions as much as they can, or they obviously would like a little bit more chance to, to meet other students, uh, be a little bit closer to them. Um, so uh, I think as we all would like the college to be a bit busier, um, hopefully we're heading in that direction. Um, study packs. Uh, do you get a book? Yes, you do get a textbook. We have free access to an online textbook. You can also buy it. There's loads of other learning resources besides. So yes, we do have a textbook. We have loads of other things as well. Um, the study packs are just our way of helping students to curate their notes. Um, is there a grade requirement for English? Just general college um, five for English language. Um, does it matter what exam board you have done? No, doesn't matter at all. We don't mind what exam board you've done at GCSE. You could even be coming to us from a board who have not done GCSEs. Um, that would be fine. Um, 
do we have any sessions, uh, drop-in sessions and online resources? Yes, we have drop-in sessions every day in chemistry plus targeted surgeries um, and workshops through ChemSoc. And I spent an entire hour today talking to the lower sixth about different online resources they could use. It would take me that long to describe them all to you. Um, so yes, absolutely loads. Uh, chemistry is a very popular subject. There's masses out there anyway, and we uh, very much signpost our students to those resources. Uh, we've got geology again. Yes, definitely consider chemistry if you're interested in geology. Um, do we do the required practicals needed to be known for the exam? Yes, and we do an awful lot more as well. Um, so many, many more than is required. Uh, would it be suitable for a student to study a combination of English language and sciences? Yes, absolutely. I've got students who study all sorts of different combinations. If you love English language and you also want to take two sciences, there's no harm in doing that at all. Um, I've known lots of students who studied English along with sciences. Um, would you recommend taking chemistry with another STEM subject or does it not matter? I would recommend taking chemistry with another STEM subject if you think there is the possibility that you'd want to do something STEM related in the future. If you have chemistry and no other STEM, you will find it difficult to progress with that chemistry um, beyond A level. Uh, will there be monthly exams uh, to technology? Yes, we do lots of assessment. Um, so we have uh, a variety of open book and also closed book exam style assessment. Um, we get students to take these very seriously. Our first years have just done their first kind of big assessment. They've got another one coming up in another couple of weeks. Uh, we see practicing in exam conditions as really important, um, but also we see open book assessment as really important in terms of judging understanding. So yes, plenty of assessment. And obviously because we're delivering assessments to 800 students every two years, um, there's uh, a lot of value in making sure that those are really high quality, really challenged students, but really tailored to the types of students we have who are high achieving, the kind of can challenge their assumptions. Someone's told me that they've been studying organic chemistry for a long time. Um, so just under half of the A-level is organic chemistry. If you know any organic chemistry when you come to us, that's brilliant. Um, you'll get a bit of a head start, but if you don't, it doesn't matter. Uh, we don't assume any knowledge of organic chemistry. We start right back from the basics. Um, so if you do know any organic chemistry, you can be that wonderfully helpful person that supports your neighbor um, whilst um, they uh, are studying it for the first time. Um, oh, and uh, about someone being home educated, so not having much lab experience. We have lots of students that come from a home education background who have never touched a piece of practical apparatus. Do not worry, you will leave us being a really proficient practical chemist. Um, right at the very beginning, we look after you very carefully. These are new labs with new hazards and new dangers and new bits of kit. So we give you videos before practicals that you can watch and familiarize yourself with the kit and the types of observations or uh, recording that you might want to make. We will look after you in the lab. We will pair you with people that will be supportive. We don't view practical as a kind of breather in lessons. We view it very much as developing important skills. And don't worry if you have no experience of it at all. You won't be alone um, and we will support you to become a really good proficient practical chemist. I think all my box of questions has now gone um, so thank you so much there were some fantastic questions in there um, really really helpful and some things that we definitely didn't touch on in the talk and um, so I'm really glad that they were asked so I think if there are no more questions then that might be the end of the session. So I just want to say a thank you to Mr. Chapman for talking us through the course. Um, thank you so much to our three fabulous students for coming and sharing their experiences. It's so valuable. It's really kind of them to give up their time. And I hope that you found this talk useful and that you are still considering A-level chemistry. So we may well get to meet you later in the year once you've made your applications. So thank you for coming.